Hey everybody, this is Steve Tantric Dex, and this is a multiband compression workshop video. So we're gonna really go through what how I use multiband compression for a variety of ways to help tonally round your sounds and help get nice, clean, fat, punchy mixes, as well as how I use it in the mastering stage. So first things first, we're gonna take a look at traditional compress compression. We're just gonna look through all the different elements of the compressor. So we're all on the same page about what I'm doing throughout the whole workshop. Okay, so this is a classic compressor here, and to, to help with this example, I have a... This is a classic compressor here with a few different parameters that we're going to be exploring. First things first is the threshold, the ratio. There's the threshold, the ratio, the gain, the attack and release. And those are all important details about what we're, what we're going to be working with for the next little bit. So the threshold is probably is, is paramount so the threshold is actually how the compressor interacts with the audio. It's what controls how the compressor interacts with the audio and one of the elements of, that controls how much the compressor interacts with the audio. So the one thing that's important to understand is that compression is gain reduction. That is, we're reducing gain, quite literally. So I'm going to use the terms compression and gain reduction uh, synonymously here. So they're going to mean the same thing. So I'm going to use both throughout this whole talk, So just so you can keep up with that. So compression is dynamic responsive, which is what makes it different than simply just turning down a gain fader or your amplitude fader in your mixer. A compressor responds to the transients of your music and brings the gain down according to that. And that's what happens with the threshold. So you're going to see as soon as I hit play here, you're going to see, see audio start happening in the meters. And I'm going to bring down the threshold so that this compressor just starts touching the surface of the audio. And you'll see as soon as the threshold starts meeting the audio, we start getting some signal in my gain reduction. So essentially what's happening here, just for this loop, is that depending on the kick or the snare there's and its amplitude, there's different amounts of gain reduction happening. So from anywhere from 1 to about 3 decibels, this compressor is bringing that down in gain. So we're going to move on to the gain fader. A lot of compressors have a makeup gain function as well, which is used for compensating for the amount of gain reduction that happens. So I have one to three decibels of gain reduction. So I also have the option of boosting it. So I'm actually not losing any audio. It brings me right back up to where I started. Now, one thing I recommend is that with auto gain, which means that the compressor itself has a built-in function that automatically brings it back up to zero decibels for you. I recommend not using that and using your ears instead if you are going to use the gain boosting. Um, I say that because from compressor to compressor, not all makeup gains are equal. So I have a compressor that is a great compressor, but the moment I activate the makeup gain, it boosts it by seemingly 20 decibels. It's outrageous and really inaccurate. It does not bring it back up to zero. It extravagantly boosts it, which doesn't work for me. I'd rather have a lot more control over what I'm doing. So that's why I recommend using the gain fader yourself and adjusting it manually. There's the ratio, which is a very important piece of compression of the compressor. So if you'll if you look, I have my ratio set to one, which means one to one. And uh, so as I bring down the threshold, you'll notice that there's no gain reduction happening. The reason being is the ratio, what it means is that for every decibel that goes over the threshold, one decibel comes out the output. Every decibel that goes over the threshold, one goes out the output. So it's even. There's, it's not bringing any gain down. It's not reducing any gain. But the moment I start turning that ratio up a bit, so let's say 2, what that means is that for every 2 decibels that goes over the threshold, one comes out the output. So it's a relationship between how much goes over the threshold and how much sound you actually hear. So the more, the higher the ratio, so let's say it's four, that means for every four decibels that comes out the threshold, only one comes out, comes out the output. So that means that the, the higher the ratio, the more compression happens. Simply stated, the higher the ratio, more gain reduction happens. I like to use micro minor amounts of compression. I like to use it just very lightly. Compression is the kind of thing that if you if you're not super comfortable with it and you're just learning it and you're not fully confident with yourself with it, then just use it lightly, just using it sparingly. Use it in a way that it just kisses the surface of the audio. 
because it's very easy to cause audio artifacts from compression or over compression distortion and that's something you always 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 want to be mindful of when using compression all right so we're going to move on to the attack and release which is measured in time in milliseconds so the attack indicates how long it takes before the gain reduction starts happening. So with a, an attack of 0.5 milliseconds, that means that the gain reduction is going to start happening immediately. An example that I like to use for this is this uh, drum transient image, where if we're going to compress this kick drum, then and I have my attack at 0.5 milliseconds, the, the gain reduction is going to start happening immediately, right around here. However, if I turn up the attack a little bit to about 300 or 400 milliseconds, it starts happening later. So what I can do is I can actually program the compressor so that no gain reductions happen until this transient peak is over, which is really important to acknowledge because in drums specifically, a lot of audio energy, the, the snap and beauty and pristineness of the drum sample itself comes from this peak. So it's really important, in my opinion, to leave that as preserved as possible. So that's a way that you can do that with compression is just to turn up the attack a bit so it doesn't so the gain reduction doesn't start happening until later. An the next one is the release. So if we, the release is the opposite of the attack. It's instead of how long it takes to kick in, it's how long it takes to kick out. So at, with a release of five milliseconds, it means that the compression, the gain reduction stops immediately after the audio signal, basically five milliseconds. However, if we turn that up a bit, it's a lot slower and can take two seconds or more depending on the setting. So to, to illustrate that, we're going to take a look at this gain reduction meter here. So I'm just going to bring this threshold down a bit so you can see this needle jump a bit here. And see how fast and rigid those movements are? Watch what happens when we turn those up a bit. They get a little bit slower moving and kind of get develop this laziness to them. So with short, short attacks and releases, it, the compression motion becomes a little bit more punchy and snappy where, versus the attack. if you turn up the attack and the release, it becomes a little bit more rounded of a texture to it. So it kind of depends on what you're going for. And th one thing to note, note is, is that if you bring down the threshold a lot, you'll be able to really dramatically hear what that over compression distortion sounds like. So just something to be aware of. I'm going to open up the second compressor here just so we can take a look at one more parameter. That's this knee shape here. So we're going to look at the two polarities, the soft and the hard. So taking a look at this little shape here, the hard knee is a little bit more of a pointed knee shape, which means that the compression also has comes in with a little bit more hardness to it. Like it has a little bit more punch or a little bit more, more instantaneousness to it versus the soft knee where it has a little bit more of a rounded smoother texture in it so when we start using compression in a musical way let's say to get like a punch to our drums or like kind of like a wafting kind of pull thrust type type feel to it then uh, we can start work playing with our knee shapes a little bit to use compression a little bit more creatively okay so moving on to multi the multiband stuff multiband compression is let's explore the word multiband first so multiband band referring to being a frequency band and use and multiple instance of multiple instances of them so with ozone 5 dynamics <clears throat> we have four bands that we're capable of using and we're fully capable of adjusting them which is great so basically we can really fine tune where we're reducing our gain from so let's open up this instance of Ozone 5 Dynamics and we're going to listen to the meat and potatoes of this tune here like the core core chunk of the main riff of this tune just so we can really get a good understanding of what compressing each band differently really does to the sound. So right now we're looking squarely at this low band here and just for this for the sake of ease I have the exact same compression settings on each of these bands. It's just a ratio of two with a quick attack and a pretty quick release with no extra gain. So let's take a look at the low end. We're listening to this part of the tune. That low, that, that low end sub bass area. So what I'm going to do is just heavily compress it just so you can hear what we're actually doing when we compress each band differently. So we've just done a whole bunch of gain reduction to this low end area here. So the sub bass and kick have pretty much dropped out. And 
right, so this is the lower mids. So essentially we're just reducing the gain of each frequency area individually. That's the low end right there. Anyways, so yeah, so it's just really fine-tuned compression or really fine-tuned gain reduction across the frequency spectrum. And this is helpful for us because it can help us really smooth out sounds that have uh, muddy low ends or too much audio energy in a certain part of the frequency spectrum. Like for example, this sound that I've used here is a neuro bass, bass line that I've made. And I found after listening to it that it has sort of a shrillness in the top upper mids section, which happens only in different periods of the modulation. So let's take a listen to the sound. So just at the very first piece of this loop here, you'll notice that this piece of audio and this piece of audio have a different kind of texture to their high end. Just listen to that. So I'm finding that that shrillness is really not very pleasing to my ear. Here, let me deactivate the compressor so maybe you can hear what I'm talking about. At high at high volume, it's really evident that there's that there's something weird happening up there that tickles the ear in a kind of funny way. And and advanced audio musicians and and um, people who have really trained ears might notice it right away. However, the average listener on the dance floor, especially at high volume on a big sound system, might get agitated, and it's more of a subconscious thing. So. The idea for music is for it to be really emotionally moving and the, one of the best ways to do that as a producer is to make sure that it, it is welcoming and inviting to the ear and not abrasive and invasive and really smooth and and uh, nicely rounded as as rounded as we can possibly get it. So this is the area of the spectrum that I'm really looking at here so I'm just going to bring back up that threshold so it's just a dry signal. I've got it soloed by clicking this S button here so you can listen to it. So I'm finding there's a little bit of shrillness happening there. That just is just gro gross to me. It kind of makes me want to puke a little bit. So we're going to smooth that out with a little bit of multiband compression. Now, what I found when I use this EQ boost was that it start, it's happening around that 2.9 kilohertz area. Now let's take a look. Let's take... It's right around there that I hear it happening from. Now a question that I get asked occasionally is why don't I just do an EQ cut, which is a great question. Now the thing about an EQ cut, it works and it cleans out that frequency, but remember that high end texture doesn't happen through this whole loop, only for certain parts of it. So if I'm committing to this EQ cut, it's going to be there for the whole sound unless I automate it, which is a lot of unnecessary work, especially if I have to copy that automation over and over and over again for the whole track. So you can always automate the EQ and it works, but there's a better way. That's why I like multiband compression is because it's dynamic responsive so I know that just by bringing down this threshold here let's take a look at this here if I bring down the threshold it's only going to compress it or bring down the gain if it that audio energy crosses the threshold line so I can set that so certain parts of the sound don't cross that line and where it gets really brash and harsh it does cross that line So you can watch this number here too as well. This uh, this little red number down here, it tells exactly in a digital number how much gain reduction is happening. So it's very useful. See, at some points it gets to 1.8 decibels, so near, nearly 2 decibels. In other parts of the sound, only 1.6. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit more until I feel like that part of the frequency spectrum has been toned down enough for it to be nice to listen to on the ears. See, and I'm finding with the threshold down to 31 um, that it's finally brought that audio energy down enough 
so that it is welcoming to the ears and isn't as brash and invasive and ear fatiguing is a key word. So just to review my compression settings here, I have my ratio of two and a quick attack and a pretty quick release as well. So it's just pretty standard compression settings. It's actually the default setting that comes with Ozone 5's dynamics, which is great and works just fine. That's how I totally round this bass line to be slightly more ear pleasing. Take, take, take.